Today we will start a new topic, the topic of parsing. Just before that we finished uh, words and disambiguation, which was concerned with words, their properties, their associations, their meanings, how they relate to the context words. After all, the meaning emerges from interaction with the contextual words in the neighborhood and uh, typically the context is a sentence. Now, uh, what is a sentence? A sentence is a sequence of words, but uh, is there anything more than the sequentiality which is inherent to sentences? Sequential set of words forms a sentence, but this is uh, hardly the necessary condition for forming a sentence. Sentences have internal structure. So, we take up this topic of parsing, which is an extremely important field of natural language processing and probably the most understood, the most uh, investigated area of language processing. The investigations into syntax of sentences led to other areas of computer science, in particular the area of uh, compilers and programming languages, because it is clear to see that the sentences are at a high level. When we work with natural language, we are interacting with other entities at a higher level. So, what is contained in a sentence? What is the inherent structure? Let us go ahead with this material of the lecture. We ask what is the need for parsing? Is parsing really needed? Sentences are linear structures on the face of it, but is that the right view? Is there a hierarchy, a tree hidden behind the linear structure? Is there a principle in branching? What are the constituents and when should the constituents give rise to children? What is the hierarchy building principle? These are very fundamental questions with respect to the structure of a sentence. Now, it is also a common observation that even when the sentence is not grammatical, the meaning is still made. I uh, give a sentence here, John C book. So, this is not a grammatical sentence. There is a seeing activity here. There is an agent of seeing which is John and uh, there is the object of seeing which is the book. But point is there is still uncertainty about the tense information for example tense. Is it uh, past or present or future? There is uncertainty with respect to that. Then there is this number information. Many books, single book, All right. So, there is incomplete specification of information when we look at this sentence, but the meaning is still understood. So, I write a sentence with correct word forms, saw a book John. This is a wrong sentence as indicated in linguistics or NLP by a star mark. When there is a star mark beside a sentence, it shows that there is something wrong with the sentence. The correct sentence would be John saw a book. This is correct. So, again there is a seeing activity which takes place in the past and uh, the object being seen is book this here is agent. Now, even when 
the sentence order is wrong, saw a book John, human beings can still make out the meaning and uh, looks like the order is not so sacrosanct after all. But uh, that is not really true, because when we are able to understand this sentence John uh, or saw a book John, we are invoking actually a higher level knowledge, we are invoking semantics. So, even though the order is disturbed, we can uh, make out that John is the seer, because John is animate possessing the ability of seeing, the book does not have the ability of seeing. So, when the order is disturbed of a sentence, we have to resort to deeper level of meaning to understand the sentence. So, the cognitive load becomes higher. Okay. We sacrifice the order or we sacrifice syntax, but this comes at the cost of uh, more challenging and difficult processing, namely the semantic processing. And notice this fact carefully that if a language processing entity or an information processing entity does not have this backup mechanism, does not have this robustness or does not have the layers of intelligence inbuilt, then it will fail when something goes wrong at a lower level. So, a picture can uh, depict this fact. So, we have the level of words, the level of syntax, the level of semantics. Whenever anything goes wrong at a particular level, okay, whenever anything goes wrong at L i, something wrong at L i would lead to uh, robust recovery at L i plus 1. So, something going wrong at the level of syntax, semantics will be inv invoked to correct that error. But the point is that why should we have this cognitive load, why should we have this extra processing if syntax can be ensured. All right. So, we move now on to this question of need for parsing. Sentences look like linear structures, they look like a linear sequence of words, but there definitely is a structure behind them as our discussion will show. We take up this sentence, the sentence is the big book of poems with the blue cover. So, it is easy to see here that the most important entity in this phrase is book. So, this is the head of the phrase, it has a special uh, role to play in the phrase, this is the most important entity in the phrase, the book and everything else is a qualifier for this entity. What kind of book? What is the size of the book? Big book. Which book? The book. So, the indicates that there was a previous reference in the discourse to book and the as a definite article comes to signify this. Of poems is a qualifier for the book, what kind of book? The book of poems and uh, with the blue cover is another qualifier for the book. So, all these are modifiers, qualifiers for the head book, the big of poems with the blue cover, all of them qualify book. So, that is why probably it is possible to naively put these qualifiers at the same level okay, of poems with the blue cover, the big all of them are uh, qualifiers for the book and therefore, they are at the same level. 
but this will not do. Okay. The structure is not really this, all the qualifiers are not at the same level. So, let us just reflect for a few minutes on this tree and see if there is some amount of larger cohesion or larger binding or larger attraction between the head and some of its qualifiers. So, book of poems with the blue cover, uh, you can see that uh, because of the proximity or adjacency of poems and with the blue cover it is possible to say that uh, poems were with blue cover. When this is said, semantics will immediately get activated and say that no, this is a nonsense interpretation, this attachment will not hold. So, with blue cover is actually attached to book, but in between there is a piece of text of poems and therefore, we need a machinery by which book of poems becomes a single entity and a blue cover is a modifier for that entity. Again big and of poems are they at the same level? There is not much harm in doing that, but still it is good to depress book of poems deeper in the tree and have big qualify that entity with blue cover also should qualify that entity. So, there is a theory which uh, governs this phenomena. This is called C command and dominance and uh, prepositions being at the same level is called a flat hierarchy with respect to the head world. But uh, we know that this structure is not correct. There are many evidences for this. One of the evidences is what is called the constituency test of replacement and when we apply the constituency test of replacement, it runs into problems. There is this phenomenon of one replacement. I bought the big book of poems with the blue cover, not the small one. So, if I introduce an anaphoric one, okay, what does this one bind to? How much of text does it point to? I bought, bought what? I bought the big book of poems with the blue cover not the small one. So, this one binds to the whole sequence of words book of poems with the blue cover not the small one. So, we express this by saying that one targets book of poems with the blue cover. Another one replacement is shown here. I bought the big book of poems with the blue cover not the small one with the red cover. So, the moment we introduce with the red cover, one targets book of poems, not book of poems with the blue cover. The amount of text one points to changes now to a smaller region book of poems. So, here one replacement targets book of poems. So, the question is why does this behavior emerge? Why is this behavior shown? To explain this, we have to propose a deeper structure behind this sentence and uh, make use of syntactical considerations. So, the tree which is actually the right representation for the inherent structure in the sentence is this. The big book of poems with the blue cover is actually a noun phrase and in the noun phrase there are these barred entities n 1 bar, n 2 bar, n 3 bar okay, or n 1 dash, n 2 dash, n 3 dash. Traditionally, they are called bars and comes from a theory due to Noam Chomsky called X bar theory, 
So, these nodes are to be introduced to give the tree the correct structure. So, this n p is composed of the and an n bar. This n bar or noun is big book of poems with the blue cover. n bar n 1 bar is again not flat. It is composed of big and n 2 bar. n 2 bar is not again flat n 2 bar is composed of n 3 bar and p p. So, big n 2 bar n 3 bar p p. n 3 bar has n as book and a preposition phrase of poems. So, book of poems is n 3 bar. So, this shows that book and of poems have strong affinity for each other, they bind together and they produce a structure n 3 bar. This n 3 bar is now modified by with the blue cover and it produces n 2 bar n 2 bar is now modified by big which produces n 1 bar, n 1 bar along with the produces the noun phrase we are interested in the big book of poems with the blue cover. So, this is the tree structure which is operative behind the sentence all right? and it is this tree which is needed to explain the one replacement. Now, to target n 1 bar, n 1 bar is this, okay. to target n 1 bar, we have to disturb the internal structure of this, we have to part up the structure and part up the structure and we have to disturb one of the constituents of n 1 bar, what is available is this as a single entity and thereby the whole thing will be targeted. Yes, we will come back to that. Now, how do we explain this phenomenon? I want the big book of poems with the blue cover, not the small one. So, one targets this whole n 2 bar. What is the reason? The reason is that big has been replaced by small and now when we uh, fill out the text for n 2 bar for 1, when we have to resolve this anaphoric reference, then we have to bring in this whole piece of text n 2 bar. So, I want the big book of poems with the blue cover, not the small one, one will take up this whole n 2 bar. There was this other example, I want the big book of poems with the blue cover, not the one, one with the red cover. So, what will one refer to now? What does one target? Again, the this deep tree comes to our help with the blue cover is here and it is disturbed with the blue cover has become with the red cover. So, one will target now n 3 bar. So, the principle is that whichever subtree is considered and a, a child of the subtree is part of so to say or substituted, the other child becomes the target for one. I want the big book of poems with the blue cover not the one with red cover. So, one with red cover is book of poems. All right. So, we have seen how to target n 2 dashed, how to target n 3 dashed. Now, we may ask how to target n 1 dashed. So, what can we disturb here? What we can disturb is the. So, the sentence could be I want this big book of poems with the blue cover, not that one. So, what is happening is that the is disturbed and replaced with this. So, replaced with that. So, n 1 dashed becomes the target for 1. This is shown here. 
I want the big this big book of poems with the red cover and not that one. So, the moment you establish correspondence between this and that one will have to have correspondence with big book of poems with the red cover. So, this shows uh, that there is uh, something to be gained by constructing these kind of deep parse trees. And if we propose a flat structure for the sentence, we are going to miss the internal structure of the sentence and also we will not be able to explain some phenomena. Here the phenomenon is that of do replacement. When we say John laughed heartily and so did Jill. John laughed heartily and so did Jill. Then what does did target? Did is an anaphoric entity, it has to target a piece of text coming before it. So, it has to target a uh, laughed okay. and similar kind of phenomenon can be found for do replacement too. So, I leave it as an exercise for you to think about how adverbs and adjectives also could be replaced anaphorically. So, it is not the case that only English displays this kind of deep structure behavior, all languages have this phenomena. So, the big book of poems with blue cover, we have written it in Hindi, Nil Jild Wali Kavita Ki Badi Kitab. Nil Jild Wali is with blue cover, Kavita Ki of poems Badi Big Kitab book. So, Hindi has the modifiers all coming before the head, Neel Jil Dwali Kitab Kavita Ki Badi Kitab. Unlike English, where some modifiers come before, some after. Here, of course, the proximity of the modifier helps to create constituents. Kavita ki bari kitab. So, if you look at the uh, structure for Bengali, it has similar structure as Hindi. Neel Malat Deva Kovitar Mota Boi T. T is called a classifier and the modifiers all come before the head except for T which is a classifier. And again one can uh, discard this flat hierarchy and create a deeper tree. So, this discussion was to show that sentences indeed have structure concealed within them. What looks like a linear sequence of words is hardly linear. It is a deep parse tree and many language phenomena cannot be explained unless we propose a deep parse tree. From this now we move on to algorithms for parsing and grammar for parsing which controls the algorithm. Grammar and parsing algorithms. We will have our discussion with this simplified grammar. Sentence goes to noun phrase and verb phrase, noun phrase goes to determiner and noun or noun, verb phrase goes to verb and adverb. Or. So, for all these rules we can find example sentences, but the meaning of this is sentence is composed of noun phrase and verb phrase. Noun phrase is composed of a determiner and noun or it could be a single noun. Verb phrase is composed of a verb and adverb or it could be a single verb. The meaning of bar is or. So, noun phrase is a determiner noun combination or a noun. Here is a much more complicated grammar the grammar which was shown before is a very simple fragment of English. This is a more complex description of English. So, there is a complementizer and a sentence, then a sentence can be an embedded sentence and a verb phrase. 
okay. or it is noun phrase followed by verb phrase which is more common. Verb phrase can have any number of adjective phrase and auxiliary verb a verb and uh, a p plus actually is adverbial phrase I am sorry and there could be adverbial phrases more than one. Then there could be a complete sentence followed by again adverbial phrase, preposition phrase, adverbial phrase. Okay. So, this is a more complex description of the language and we need this kind of powerful grammar if we have to handle all the complex phenomena of a natural language. Now, however, we will be working with this simple grammar which we showed because our goal is to understand the algorithms. We take this simple sentence people laugh. Okay. Now, since we will be discussing algorithms now, it is very important to mark these numbers 1, 2 and 3. The whole parsing algorithm is controlled by these between word numbers they are extremely important for controlling the flow of the algorithm. One is for the position before the first word, two is for the position between the first and the second word, three is for the position after the second word and so on. So, this kind of position convention is very, very common in parsing algorithms and let us note them carefully. Parsing is surely controlled by a lexicon or a dictionary consisting of a set of words and their parts of speech or categories, grammatical categories. People can be noun or verb, love can be also can be noun or verb. So, this comma indicates that two different grammatical categories are possible for both the words. So, what would be the example sentences? In people laugh, people is noun, laugh is a verb, but uh, if you would say the house was peopled with many old persons, the house was peopled with many old persons. In this case, people is a verb, that is why V is shown here. He had a good laugh, here laugh is a noun. So, uh, people laugh uh, though the sentence is small in terms of part of speech many different combinations are possible. However, because of their mutual disambiguation people will ultimately be noun, laugh will be verb. So, suppose for the moment that we do not worry about grammatical categories the part of speech disambiguation has not been done if you run a part of speech dagger over people laugh, then uh, what will happen is that uh, people will be marked as noun, laugh will be marked as verb and uh, this will not cause any problem in the parsing stage where all the words have got their grammatical categories. First we illustrate top down parsing. In uh, top down parsing what happens is that uh, the state and the position of the pointer for the input string is maintained all right. So, this shows that S is the start symbol and 1 is the position of the input pointer. So, the input pointer is here initially. What is the meaning of this? The meaning is that the start symbol S is waiting to be expanded to get the other non terminals and 1 is the position of the pointer which means it is looking at the first word and waiting to make decisions based on the first word. So, a stack is maintained, stack is the right data structure. S is expanded, we get n p v p noun phrase verb phrase and the position of the input pointer is still 1 because no word is consumed. After this, n p is the first non terminal which is waiting on the stack 
it is expanded to dt and n determiner and noun and var phrase nothing happens to it input pointer is still at position 1. However, we take another action here an additional action which is the other production noun phrase going to n is also brought in by expansion and the verb phrase is of course there. So, this is an alternate state which the machine could have gone to provided it had expanded n p as n because n p is extended expanded as d t n this is the state which has resulted. Now, we, we cannot do anything because uh, the stack says that we need a non terminal d t a determiner is needed, but what the input pointer is looking at is people, people is not a determiner it is either noun or verb. So, this expansion or this resolution by the word cannot happen. So, the machine undoes the, so the machine it takes, a, it takes the alternative, the alternative state which could be used was n b p. So, that is brought on n b p and the input pointer is at 1. Now, the non terminal which is waiting to be resolved is n, people is both noun and verb. So, it can play the noun role here. So, people will be consumed, the input pointer will move to 2 and the non terminal n will disappear saying that it has found a word of type noun. So, now V p gets exposed the input pointer is at 2, it is looking at the next word which is laugh okay, position number 2, this is position number 2. Now, the input pointer is looking at laugh. V p cannot as such be resolved by laugh. So, V p will it be expanded, V p is expanded to V A D V verb and adverb, no input is consumed. So, the input pointer stays at 2 and uh, the backup state is maintained where V p goes to V and 2. Now, uh, there is laugh in front of input pointer and v is the non terminal which needs to be expanded. So, laugh is consumed input pointer moves to 3 exposing the non terminal a d v, but however, people was consumed laugh is also consumed there is no more word, but there is a non terminal a d v something is wrong what is wrong the stacks has not reached the S symbol, but the input uh, stream of words is over. So, in this case what will happen is that it will bring the backup state V 2. So, V 2 is brought here. Now, laugh is consumed by V, the input pointer moves to 3. There is no more symbol on the stack, there is no small symbol on the input tape, this is the condition for termination. So, all inputs should be over, no symbols remaining on the stack and uh, here the, the sentence has been parsed correctly. Even though on the way there were false steps which needed undoing and bringing the backup step, backup stack backup state rather. So, the alternatives are maintained and they are explored. So, this is top down processing. So, what is the essential idea? We start with the S symbol, we bring the non terminal by expansion. For any non terminal that is expanded, if it had another way of expanding it, then that backup state is maintained in wait and if we run into a dead end while processing, we resort to the backup stack 
and bring the backup states. Now, how can we take a false step? Let us examine that question. We take a false step when there is a particular grammatical category waiting either to be expanded or to be resolved with a word on the input. So, when the symbol the non terminal with a particular grammatical type cannot be matched with the word in front of the input pointer, this is a case of temporary failure. So, in this case we may have to go deeper into the parse tree developed so far or we may have to back up a long distance to obtain the backup states to explore an alternate path. Now, if you look at the algorithm carefully, you might have noticed that the processing, the syntactic processing proceeds without any regard for the data. Okay. What is the data that is in front of the input pointer? What data should I resolve? What is the type of the data? No such consideration is given to top down processing. This algorithm is called top down processing because we start with the non terminal symbol S and go on expanding it until we have been able to assign a word or a group of words to a grammatical category. And finally, the whole sentence is over, all the input is consumed. This is known as top down parsing. This is also called predictive parsing because whenever we expand a non terminal, we expect that the next word would be of the type of the non terminal which comes on the stack. So, n p goes to d t n. This means that I expect a determiner to come on the input string and I predict or I expect it without any regard to the data, without any regard to whatever data I am now seeing or likely to see or have seen before. Okay. So, this is a very simple minded strategy, but it can give rise to a very elegant parser. In particular, Prolog has a nice way of implementing top down parser. This kind of parsing algorithm is also called recursive descent parsing or top down predictive parsing, many names for this algorithm. So, we have discussed one problem with this algorithm. So, top down parsing is predictive, no regard for data. the word in front of the input pointer, no regard for this and useless productions brought for processing. However, a more serious problem is that problems with top down parsing, a more serious problem is that cannot have left recursion that is rules of the form A goes to A B. That should be easy for you to see. If you have a production of the form A goes to A B, then 
when A is on the stack, it is expanded to A B. Now, again A needs to be expanded, when A is expanded another A B comes in. This A B has an A in front which needs to be expanded. So, this can go ad infinitum. So, if there is left recursion in the production rules, you cannot make use of top down parsing in particular without removing the left recursion. So, this is an important uh, shortcoming of top down parsing. Proceeding further, we can reiterate some of these points made this kind of top down parsing is a kind of search and it is goal driven. It gives importance to textual precedence, the rule precedence, no regard for data a priori, useless expansions can come. And the fact that it gives preference to uh, textual precedence should be clear. The rule n p goes to d t n was textually before n p goes to n. So, that rule was invoked first and n p goes to n was held in abeyance in the backup state. Bottom up parsing is the complementary approach to top down parsing. Here some conventions are useful. So, n 1 2 the suffix 1 2 it represents the positions. The meaning of n 1 2 is that in the sentence between position 1 and position 2, I have a noun n. Okay. So, using this convention, I can write the production rule for S goes to n p v p as follows. I know that the sentence starts at position number 1, but I do not know where it ends that is why this question mark. S goes to n p. So, n p begins at position 1 to be fully correct we may say I also do not know where n p the noun phrase ends. So, it could be one question mark and then v p to be completely correct there could be a question mark we do not know where the v p begins and if we do not know the length of the sentence, we do not know where it ends also. Now, this dot plays a very, very important role in the whole bottom up parsing algorithm. The movement of the dot controls the parsing strategy. All the entities which are before, before the dot show the completed work and entities coming after show work to be done. So, in this example, if we see the position of the dot and the fact that there is a noun phrase before it and a verb phrase after it, this means that we have already done the work of finding a noun phrase. A noun phrase has been found in the position 1 to 2 the task of finding a verb phrase from the position 2 remains to be done. Now, here is the pictorial representation of the algorithm of bottom up parsing. We have this all important positions 1, 2 and 3 before the sentence, after the sentence and between words. So, the way bottom up parsing goes is that first uh, people is resolved. People can be noun or a verb. So, we write n 1 2 or v 1 2, which means we have found a noun or verb between position 1 and 2. So, we can now uh, resolve this rule n p goes to n, because we have found a noun between position 1 and 2. So, this says that we have found a noun phrase also between 1 and 2. And we have also found a verb phrase between 1 and 2, because people can be verb 2, we want to. Now, we can move up to the level of S and say that S 1 question, there is a noun phrase between 1 2, dot means the work 
done is the that of finding the noun phrase, we have to find the verb phrase now, it can begin from 2. Then we move on to laugh, laugh can be both noun and verb, the noun possibility is discarded, the noun possibility uh, gives rise to N p getting resolved between 2 and 3 and V p getting resolved between 2 and 3, so a verb has been found. Since the work of finding a V p is over, we can go back to this rule and move the dot over to this place. So, the sentence is parsed by finding a noun phrase here, verb phrase here. This is bottom up parsing and it is com complementary to top down parsing. It is data driven, the words decide what kind of uh, non terminals are invoked and that in turn decides which non terminals can be resolved. So, this we will discuss in more detail and then move on to the combination of top down and bottom up parsing very famously known as chart parsing in the next class.